Um, yeah. So welcome to this Hyperledger Sweden uh, meetup. Uh, my name is Roland and I'm happy to be your guest for today, for this session. And uh, today, I think I have uh, prepared some uh, awesome content for you. Uh, we will extend the network from the last session. So based on this network, we are going to discover how we can use chain code and smart contracts. And uh, this in the case of Fabric version two. And in my presentation, or uh, general in my slides, I will show you not only the theoretical part, I will show you also how you can uh, do this, how you can, how, how, how it feels so. And uh, I will give you also around this topic information. And um, in the first part, I will tell you something about the term smart contract uh, versus chain code. And um, when we come from the technical side, we sometimes we forget uh, what about in the, in the field before when it comes to the chain code. And uh, so the term smart contract is a little bit different used in Fabric, but when we read uh, carefully to the documentation, we will see that uh, they have linked this term to some specific uh, um, context and chain code also to a specific context. But um, we will see this a little bit later. And then in special, we are going to discover the new decentralized governance for uh, chain code or for smart contracts, which is introduced in the version two. And uh, to see a little bit the difference between the process we have to do in the version uh, one. So in favorite versions one, uh, 0.4, 0.6, or 9, uh, and uh, in in the comparison to the version 2. So and uh, so we can see a little bit how this process differs and how we can uh, or how, which steps we have to do. And yeah, and especially we in this session we are going to the chain code lifecycle management and see uh, what is uh, what is this for. And um, to practice this a little bit, so I have prepared uh, a chain code for this. So in this example, we are going to use the test network as well, but we don't use the standard uh, chain code, which is by default installed. Uh, we will use a um, different chain code. This is called the AB store chain code. It's also in the favorite examples. And uh, so with this example, we can see how we can use the test network to uh, use a different chain code. Of course, also your own chain code when you try to test it and uh, try different things. And uh, that's um, the reason why I have decided to do this. And then we are going to install this in our both uh, organizations and see how this works. And then uh, if we have time enough, then we can modify this chain code uh, because um, the guys from the business, um, for the management, uh, said, okay, we have to change our smart contract because we want now different rules in our organization or in, in our network. And then we have to formulate this and then we have to up change the chain code. So, and then we can see how is the upgrade process for the chain code, which we have used and installed uh, before. And here you have the references, but as I have mentioned in the Slack, not in the Slack, in the, in the Zoom chat, I have copied the link to the Slack channel. So please uh, join if you uh, doesn't. Then also the link to this to repo, to the GitHub repo is there. So you can now uh, uh, copy and paste uh, if you want to uh, do it uh, with me, then you can copy and paste the commands directly from the GitHub uh, page and uh, the slides. The Slack channel, uh, you can see the Slack channel uh, in front. And if it's not working, so I will do it uh, later. 
Um, yeah, and of course the documentation uh, is uh, for every time a good resource to read and uh, that's the reason why I have it here. So, okay, so let's come to the first point, smart contract versus chain code. And um, that's an interesting part. So many people think blockchain is a brand new technology. So, but it isn't, I think. So when we say Nick Chavo or Nick Sabo uh, has introduced the term of a smart contract in a paper called Smart Contracts, Building Blocks and digital, for Digital Markets uh, in the 1990s, 1969. So, and uh, this is a paper uh, where today, so I, I, I read that uh, a paper um, published uh, two uh, months ago about smart contracts. And also in this paper, this article uh, is used and uh, cited. So smart contracts uh, exist uh, a long time. And um, also other technologies uh, which are used in Fabric and uh, uh, blockchain technologies are not new. So only the combination is new in this field. So, and uh, this new combination makes uh, this blockchain technology so uh, valuable and uh, it gives so much impact because these are techniques which are proved over a long time. And uh, here we have a small uh, diagram. So, and we have an organization one and we have an organization two. And uh, we have the terms smart contract and we have the term chain code. So how we can differ these two parts uh, from each other. And uh, I think so that's a, a try from my side to give an explanation for this. So, and I think uh, before we can uh, create a consortium of Fabric network. So as you know, Fabric is a permissioned blockchain system, so it is it's not a public system. Here, their must, organization must come together and say, okay, we will create a consortium. And in this consortium, we have to agree uh, to certain conditions. And uh, as I have mentioned in the last session, uh, in the field of blockchain, there are a lot of professionals involved. So we have seen the uh, blockchain developer, front-end developer, system administrators from the technical side, but also from the business side. So we have the, the business uh, people and uh, the managers and all the sales guys and uh, who are going to do something crazy and cool stuff. And uh, they try to implement uh, and conditions. So they say, okay, we can come to an agreement and uh, we call this a smart contract and this smart contract should be executed when uh, certain conditions are met. And uh, this, we can call this the business model. So we can say a smart contract, you can imagine a smart contract as a business model formalized by business guys, by the management, for example, and they discuss this and say, okay, under these conditions, we come together. In the last slide, you will see the business model from the AB store and how we will change it when the business guys say, okay, now we would like uh, to make a change in this model. And um, so we can say, okay, smart contract is like a, as a business model for this now. And what, what you can see in Fabric is the chain code. And we can, we can say the chain code is a programming implementation of the smart contract or from different from several smart contracts. And in Fabric, you see it a little bit more, I think, than in other uh, blockchain systems like Ethereum, where you have only one language uh, to implement a chain code or, or a smart contract. So, and the chain code in, in Fabric is maybe an interaction with an API layer. So the chain code doesn't access the ledger directly or the channel, so they interact with an API. And in Fabric, you have different possibilities to do that. So in my example, examples, I use the language Go for that. So I need the language Go and use the SDK in the one point version, there was the, the shim, there's a low level API. So we can use it also in the version two, but 
And then uh, uh, version two, we have this, con this new contract API. Uh, API. And um, in the language of Go. But we have, can do it also in the language of Node.js or Java. So, and you see the chain code, you can translate the chain code here in a programmable implementation for this smart contract. And this is maybe a little bit uh, a try to understand what is, when we talk about smart contract, we can do it and say, okay, this is more from the business model and the business side that we say, this can summarize with a business model. And when it comes to a chain code, then we have an implementation of this chain code in a programmable uh, code. So you, every chain code, when we use Go, it's a program. And this program will be installed uh, on the BS. And, uh, but we can do it in Go, in Node.js, uh, and even in Java. And uh, that's make, uh, make Fabric also unique because and this is not so in, in uh, not so possible in other blockchain systems. And here you can see in this slide, as we have the organization one and two, and when they come to an agreement on the business side, because in the, in the first step, the managers from organization one and two, they must say, okay, in these conditions, we work together. So, and they have to write it down. We have to write it down also in the paper. So, and they must sign it on a traditional way, I think. So, because it must be a, uh, a contract. Yeah? And this contract should also uh, uh, bind by law. And some people say also that a smart contract I is equal to, to a law. And uh, that's the way where we want. But the implementation, how we are going to implement this smart contract, this is then the chain code. And this chain code can implement it in different Ways. So, and I think that's a good uh, decision tree or a tree where you can uh, come to this topic and think a little bit uh, of this topic. And this paper, which is linked here, is also a good starting point to read about the beginnings. You can say uh, about the beginnings uh, in the 1969 uh, from smart contracts, and now we have 2020. So you see it's a lot of time uh, going away uh, until uh, when it comes from Nick Sable's uh, ideas and visions to the point now where we are talking about train code. And in the Fabric version two, there is a new process and they call it the centralized governance for train code. And I think that's a pretty good step, a pretty good boost for the enterprise level and for the control, for, for more control that multiple organizations can work together. And the main uh, message in this decentralized governance is that uh, every organization or the, it depends, in, in, the, in the standard case, the majority of the organizations has to be uh, agreed with this, uh, new chain code and uh, they can test it they can check it and in fabric version 2 there's a process for this and this is called this chain code life cycle management and that's the the, the main message here multiple organizations can to come can uh, can come to an agreement on the on these parameters of it of, of a chain code so and before it is installed and before it is used so and uh, here are some points. Um, yeah, so that means that in, in, our, in our scenario, organization one and organization two uh, must agree to this chain code. Um, they must approve it. So with a formal step, so they, they must make some commands and then they can um, approve this chain code. And in the, in the step before, they must have the possibility to check the chain code. So, and that's also a, uh, a step before that we can say, okay, we can package the chain code and send this chain code to the organization and then administrator or a developer can check this, can test this on our own system and show how this works. And so they have more control uh, about what happened. And also in the upgrade process. 
So we will see in the upgrade process when we update our chain code, we also have to approve this update process. And there's, uh, simpler, there's also a simpler endorsement policy and uh, improvement for private data collections. Uh, this is a part we will not see today, um, but we will have an inspectable chain code package. And uh, that's also a good, uh, it's a very easy uh, step, I think. So they use a tar package, a tar archive to back, package the, the Go program and the, um, um, a file, a meta file with some informations inside uh, together. And uh, we have one file, one zip file, for example, uh, that we can send uh, to the other organizations. And we can start multiple chain cons on a channel using uh, one package. So there must be some scenarios where we are going to uh, introduce uh, the chain code uh, once uh, more than one time on a channel. And this, this is also possible. And yeah, it's identical. And yeah, that's an interesting part. The last part here, the chain code package do not need to be identical across channel members. So this is one I have, haven't tried so, but this would, something a good uh, point maybe for the next time. So I think the idea behind this is um, when we have installed uh, chain code on two organizations and one organization uh, would like to um, have a little bit more information from this, then uh, or maybe a small bug fix or a small valid uh, input validation uh, item. So something some minor changes, uh, which uh, is not um, or has not any has not an effect on the read write set uh, from the ledger from the transaction. The transaction will be also valid. Then you can uh, do this. But how this works, this uh, I have to discover. Uh, I have to discover. I think. Yes, so, but that's also, a, but that's an interesting part. So that would mean that we can change the chain code uh, without, without the improvement from the other organizations for minor changes. Maybe that could be in the documentation is, 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 is it written that the read write set must be the same. So it could be that uh, we can implement the query function and uh, because the query function doesn't uh, uh, change the read write set. So, but I'm not sure. So this is the point I have to discover a little bit. And here we will see the uh, transformation uh, process. So uh, we have here two tables. So in, in version one, you have here the install the chain code on the PS. So you have the install command and then you install it. And um, when you install a chain code, uh, so as you know, we have uh, two names of peers, I think, new definitions of peers. So we have uh, peer is not equal to peer. So we have the so-called endorsement peers and we have the so-called uh, committing peers. So and uh, what is an endorsement peer? What is a committing peer? So endorsement peer is a peer where chain code is installed. So you don't have to do anything. So the only thing you have to do is uh, to install the chain code, then you will have an endorsement peer. And uh, when you have only a, a peer in the system with a joint uh, channel, uh, then you will have only a committing peer. And uh, this peer is only used for the validation uh, of, the, of the ledger data. And uh, so to, to, to get an endorsement peer, the only thing to do is to install the chain code. And then there was the instantiation uh, step. So with the instantiation, the, the, the chain code uh, is, uh, is created and then we are ready to use uh, the chain code. So with an invoke or with a query command. And, and here in, in table two, you see the, the four uh, steps here. The first step is you can package the chain code. So, and uh, the result of the package process is, is, is a simple tar uh, archive, uh, a zip tar archive with the chain code and a file called meta.json. And in this file, uh, there are some meta information 
without the chain code. So, and then we can install it uh, on the peers. And the process is the same. So when we install it, then we will have an endorsement peer. And this endorsement peer can, uh, can be queried and can be uh, do the invoke uh, action to uh, send the transaction to the orderer and so on. And this step must be done on every peer. So on in every organization. And then this is the new step. So we have an approved step. So every organization must improve this chain code. And uh, when we change nothing, as is like in the test network, the default uh, configuration is means that the lifecycle endorsement policy, and that's the name, uh, must have the majority. And then we have uh, the majority on organizations in the network. And when we have um, the, the two organizations, then we need uh, an improvement from organization one and also from organization two. And we can see how or which organizations have, uh, which organizations has improved this chain code. So there is a command where we can check the readiness of the chain code. And so we can see, okay, uh, organization one uh, has improved this, organization two has improved this, organization three and four hasn't. So, and we see this and every, admin or admin from each organization can do this. So to do these actions, you have to be uh, the admin of the fabric network. So for, from the identity side, from the membership service provider side, you must an admin for this. And then you can commit the chain code. And this step could be done by every admin in the network. So that's not only limited to the organization one, admin who has introduced in our case this step every admin in this organization can commit this chain code um, at this time when the chain code is ready and when in our case the majority has improved this chain code and then the chain code is ready and we can use it and uh, one uh, important part here is that um, and this is a good improvement. So here we can see two improvements. The improvement is that we have a controlled version, uh, a controlled process where we can roll out our chain code and we can see, okay, in my organization, I don't have, I don't want this chain code. I don't, I cannot improve this. And that's why the reason why I said the smart contract I came from the management side. So when we found the network, and the consortium. We have to come to an agreement under which conditions we have to do this. And that's not only the condition, how is the chain code, uh, how the chain code works, or the smart contract should work. So also about the endorsement policy. So we have to come to an agreement about the endorsement policy and also about the life cycle endorsement policy. But these are two different uh, kinds of shoes. So the life cycle endorsement policy is responsible for the implementation, for the, for the installation and for the upgrade of a chain code. And the endorsement policy is responsible for the process uh, when is uh, a transaction valid. So we are, some organization must agree. So this process is also divided in, this, in these two steps. And one important step here, improvement is here, when we commit the chain code, in this step, um, every chain code is, is uh, executed in a single Docker container. And this Docker container is built on this step. So when we commit the chain code, then we will see the chain code, the Docker container for this chain codes uh, are, are built and ready and started for both organizations. So when we come with our, for, with, with our first uh, invoke or with the call of the init function for the chain code, then we don't have a, a delay. So, and this delay was in the version in, in version one. So, when we have the the first 
the first, uh, when, we, when we did the first transaction, then we have a small delay until, and this delay depends how fast the machine is and how fast the machine can um, create this uh, chain code container. And uh, I think that's an improvement uh, for, for, the, for the daily work. So, and then we have a ready to use chain code. And then that, that's a comparison. So and these steps on the right side, we are going to do now. Here you have the steps uh, in, a, in, in, in the fourth step. So we have to package the chain code. So that's a good step. So we have a, a single file and this single file we can spread over the network and we can send it per email or whatever, how we can uh, transport the chain code to the administrator of the organization. And um, I mean, so for the practical thing, so when you have an organization, so who is the chain code developer for this? Is the chain code developer a consortium, a group of a developer from organization one, organization two, organization three, and they work together? So that's like every other software development process, I think. So you can make a pair programming, uh, you can an audit process or whatever. So, but um, from the chain code side, which I know, so a chain code is a, not so a huge program. So, okay, it could be complex and uh, it could also be uh, a large one, but uh, in most cases, I think uh, it's uh, work for a single person, not for a group. So maybe a group can um, architect this, uh, can consult this, can help, but we will, I think uh, in most cases we will have a single coder, uh, a single Go or Java Node.js developer who writes in the end this chain code. So, and I think I, I, I read something like this also in the documentation uh, that's an, 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 an best practice so that we can have uh, someone creates this chain code and then delivers this chain code to the other organization. And then they can, can audit this chain code. So, but this depends on the organization, on the whole process, on the project management and so on. So, so that's a little bit outside from this uh, chain code, uh, from the favorite code. And then when we have this, then the, the um, admins and developers uh, can uh, inspect this chain code and say, okay, it's okay. Yeah. And, um, and then they can install it. So they have a command and they can install it. And um, every organization uh, has to install it on, on, on the dedicated peers uh, which they want to have in this network. And then the uh, approved process starts. And uh, in this approved process, every organization must approve to this chain code. And yeah, and then when the majority is reached, then uh, as I have mentioned, then one administrator of the whole network can commit this and uh, the system is ready to work. So these are the four steps. And uh, yeah, and here is the small overview. What we have seen, so that's the same network consortium uh, from the test network. And uh, we have here this, the, the same setup as we have seen in the last session. We have one order organization with the single raft based ordering system. And we have two, organ, two peer organizations uh, with uh, one peer as an uh, endorsement peer, or configured as an endorsement peer. And we have a ledger here. And on this ledger, we have one channel. The channel is called channel one. So uh, this view, uh, this, this display here, this graph here uh, shows that you can have more than one channel. So uh, the, the link between, the, between every uh, participants in this network is the ledger. So we have a ledger, uh, you, can, you can imagine this in, in different layers. So the ledger is the ground for this. Huh? And on this ledger, we can have a channel, so channel one. So, but we can have different channels and different channels can have um, different access rights for different members and so on. 
And on this channel, we have installed one train code or a different train code to do something. And uh, we will store the App Store train code in the version one. So two important facts here are uh, important. So we have a, a label, this is the so-called label. We have a, a, a version and we have a sequence. And a little bit later, we will see what does it mean. So, but uh, the label gives you um, the possibility to say, okay, we want, uh, we want to give our chain code a version number. So, and uh, there are different uh, possibilities to do this. You can do it as it like in the normal software development process. You can say, my version is 1.1.1. So you have a free pair. So where you say, okay, on the right side, the, the first number uh, displays some bug fixes, for example. Yeah. And the, the, the second number will be a, um, a feature, a non-breaking a not a non code changing uh, feature, for example. Yeah? And when we change the number uh, in the front, when we have 2.1, uh, then we will, okay, the two in the front uh, signals uh, us that we will have uh, maybe code breaking changes for this. No? So, but you can also have a, a, a number like one, two, three, four, and so on. So that depends to you. But we will have a sequence number. And the sequence number is very important uh, for the improve process and for the commit process. And uh, the sequence number is a, is, is a simple number but it must be increased uh, on every chain code uh, uh, change. So, and, but we will see this a little bit later. So, and that's the reason why I have here this two, one and 2.1, so that we are a little bit aware of this. And then here, what the chain code, what, what the chain code does. So it had two main functions implemented. So we have one query function where we can query something um, and uh, we have the invoke function to send a transaction or to do a transaction. And we have a delete function for, 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 the, um, for the account. So, but in my case, I don't uh, use this one. It's only for completeness. And uh, this is the use case. So, and uh, we, are, we have two use cases. So we have the use case, the standard use case. So when the organization one and the organization two come to an agreement and what have the agreement in this chain code is uh, a uh, any account sends a certain amount of money to B. And that means that uh, when we have to instantiate, uh, we have to init, so initialize the system with an amount of money. So we can say uh, person A has 1,000 and person B has um, 10, uh, $10 or 10, uh, 10 amounts of, of, of money or units of uh, something. And uh, when, we, when we send some units from A to B, then we have to uh, degrees the money from a, from a and we have to increase the money from b so and that's the the business decision the smart contract a here in this example in version one and this is implemented this functionality is implemented in the chain code which is uh, uh, by default in the five examples uh, involved and um, later when we have done the management came and said okay now the business grows and grows and uh, whew, uh, we want to earn a little bit money. And we say, okay, now the, we have a lot of transaction and we have a lot of transaction costs and so on. And now we say, we want to uh, earn something. So we introduce a specific account, a bank or <laughs> something like that. And we want to, um, we want to calculate the fee. So, in my case, I have 2%, I want 2% fee uh, on every transaction A sends to P. So, okay, that's not really uh, a good example, 
and also the implementation um, is not the perfect one because um, in the chain code uh, I don't want I, I want not so much change in the chain code so that it's so so that we have to complicate the things so and uh, we have uh, only used integers for the calculation of the fee in the in the in the chain code and uh, that leads that the, that the numbers are not so correct but that's only a, a single example so where you can understand uh, what is the upgrade process and it's not the example how you can uh, cash up uh, some fee uh, up to the bank or something like this so it's only uh, a simple example that's what i have uh, uh, in the moment found and changed the chain code so that we can have a single uh, a little bit uh, a little example that we can see how we can do this and we can look also a little bit in the second chain code so last time we have seen the chain code um, with the assets um, and uh, the, the full chain code and this is also an example from the favorite examples so we can look a little bit in this and see how they do this and uh, how we can change this and here, this, this is the second implementation for the upgrade process. So, um, yeah. So, okay. So, So can you see my terminal? Is that? I'm not sure when when Zoom shows shows me which terminal uh, and what is displayed in the in the display. So can you see my terminal again? So yes. Okay. So now you can see. A terminal on the left side and you see the um, the github repo uh, which i have prepared for you so. So. and with this tutorial you can uh, try to reproduce this and uh, yeah, so that's the same installation like the last one. And uh, yeah, we have uh, some, we have already some work done. So we have uh, org1 and org2 environment files where we have prepared the environment variables. And I would like to show you how today a new one. So there is a script, it's called monitor docker dot shell. And this is a script which came so originally from the commercial paper example here. And in this uh, script, so I will look uh, in this, uh, we use, they use uh, a Docker, uh, a Docker container, which collects the, uh, the, 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 the chain code output and write it uh, uh, to, to, to the standard output to, to, to the, to the uh, to the terminal. So with this, uh, with the script, we can uh, collect the container output from the from the chain code container and see uh, some debug messages. So I have I have uh, done some 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 debug messages uh, in this chain code so and then we can see something. So but this is a good good point. So to collect the output in a single uh, in a, on a single place and this script. Uh, is uh, under the commercial paper example so you can copy this with this command here uh, to our working directory here and that's here a new a new thing and i think that's also new i haven't seen that in the 1.4 version but i don't know also uh, but i don't think uh, uh, i have noticed this because it stands also in the documentation and i have I haven't seen this in the documentation uh, from 1.4. So I think that's the reason why um, it must be new. 
Okay, so, and then we have our two organization one and organization two files, so a short few. So and these are the environment variables, uh, as we have seen uh, in the last time, and also uh, the, for the organization two. So, and that's the reason uh, why we can switch very easily between this two organization. So, but I see here one, one environment variable isn't set here. So we can do this. So, so we don't have any problems with that. Okay. Okay, so, and then um, another good, uh, hint from my side is um, when you try a little bit with the system sometimes it happens that when you start the network um, this the, the the boot process breaks so there will come an error uh, called like channel can't create it or something like that and uh, this is this is this happens then when we don't use the uh, when we don't clear the network in, in a formal or in a correct way. So when you play a little bit with that uh, today or tomorrow and then leave your machine and come in two days uh, uh, again to this position and try another one, then uh, make always sure that you first execute the network uh, down script. Uh, so and in this case. Uh, the script is very is very well, so it uh, closes all networks, it deletes all uh, unused images, it deletes all volumes, all used or not used volumes for this, and then uh, we are we can um, be sure that we have a clean system. And uh, but you can also use the two Docker commands, uh, also uh, well to know. Uh, when you use Docker system prune, then you'll see here, uh, stop all containers, network, and so on. So you can also make sure that this is, and also the same for the network, uh, for the volume. Yeah, when you, for the volumes, yeah, you can also lead the volumes and then reclaim the space. So that we have, we not, we, we not lose so much space. Okay. So, um, yeah, and to do so, we use our Tmax session again. So that's also very comfortable. So when you have, uh, so we have, this already exists. So we have touch. And you see, <laughs> you see the difference. So in this, uh, panels, uh, your history is stored. Oh, we can clear it and clear it again. So, and for those you don't know this, so how you can switch between these uh, panels, yeah, and there are some keys, key commands. So it's really worth to spend a little time to the Tmax uh, uh, documentation. And on the internet, there are a lot of cheat sheets uh, where you have summarized uh, the most common Tmax commands and, um, and they are really useful. So, and, uh, and to, to switch between these two panels, you can use this command, this key combination. So, and this is always the control and B. So with control and B, you, you come in so-called so a command um, mode, and then you can set another command uh, and uh, with different actions. So, and when we jump switch between this, we have to say control B, Q, and then you see zero and more, command B, all panels got a number, B, Q, zero, and then you can jump. So that's it. Okay, so, okay, now we have our, uh, our panels ready. 
and we have uh, cleaned up our system. And now we can start a new network and we, we, we use the test network and we create the channel one with this command. And if everything works, then we will have uh, the network running, but without any chain calls. And we are going to install now uh, our own chain code and do this step by step. So you can go uh, to the script and uh, modify the script in a way that you can install, of course, your uh, AB store chain code. So then you don't have to do it by hand, but we want, you, we want to see how we can do this. Okay, so with Docker PS, we see, oh, Docker containers, is, Docker containers are running. And uh, as I've shown at the last time, you can use the Docker Compose command as well. And don't forget, the Docker Compose file is not in the same uh, directory uh, where we are now. Uh, where we are now, so it's in the Docker. There is a subdirector. It's called Docker, and there is a Docker Compose test. And And here you can see uh, the log from this and you can follow this up also. So, but we want to see something new and uh, that's a new monitor script. So make sure that you have here, here access rights. So we need here access rights. And then we can start The monitor script with the name of the of the network. The network name is by default uh, net un underscore test. So, and that's it. Now we can switch to terminal uh, to panel one, and now the the process for installing the chain code starts. So make sure, as I've mentioned, you must be an admin user. So and. Um, as we have seen last time in version two, we don't need a chain code, a CLI container anymore. So the, uh, the, the, the peer command and some other commands are installed as a binary in the pin folder. And uh, so we can call the, the, we can do all commands directly from the command line and we don't need any uh, CLI container more. So, and uh, yeah, so, but, and how we can be an admin. So, and that's the reason uh, where we have uh, pro set up the, these uh, environment files, and we can execute this with the source command. We have also seen uh, last time. And you can use the web command as we have seen last time uh, to see, okay, this is, uh, we, have, we have this environment variable set. And uh, about the environment variables, this will be also a good session, I think. So um, Fabric is based on the Go language and uh, they use Viper as a configuration management tools. And um, most configuration variables came from the so-called core YAML file. And uh, we can override this core YAML file with this environment variables. So the question is, which environment variables are exist? So there is no list. You cannot find a list for this because it's in the core YAML file involved. So, and, um, but in the core YAML file, the, the environment variables are not written in this way. So this, 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 this kind of writing of this combination of, of the TLS enabled. So the TLS, the, 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 the property name is TLS enabled in the core YAML file, I think. And uh, the rest here, the combination here, this is provided to the Viper configuration, uh, which is used in Go. And this is, a, I think, a standard uh, a standard library where you can uh, use 
which you can use in Go when it comes to configuration uh, and import from configuration variables and environment variables. So, and how this fit together? This, I think, that's also a really good um, uh, session uh, title because um, I haven't seen any um, demonstration or presentation or something like, like this about this particular topic. So, and I'll, but I have seen a lot of questions uh, in the chat uh, and in the hyperledger chat and a Stack Overflow chat where people ask me ask uh, where you can find which environment variables uh, exist and uh, to understand uh, how this configuration belongs to the core .yaml file. Uh, this I think it's, uh, it's it's good for the mindset and good for the understanding uh, where you can look and how you, what you can use as an environment variable and in in, in which in which um, kind. So, but that's our story. So, um, yes, so now we are an admin. So, in the first step, what we have to do is uh, we have to package the chain code. So, and to package the chain code, um, we have to install um, all vendor dependencies. So, and in my scenario, I have copied this chain code in the chain code directory here. So, and we have here the App Store and the App Store 2. So, but now we go in the App Store version one and uh, here we have the App Store and we have uh, the, uh, the mod file and the sum file. And maybe we can make a short look into this. You can see here this. So, and the chain code is also good to learn. So it's always a good idea to look into this chain code. Also, if you are not a, a chain code uh, developer to understand how this, this work and how which dependencies are also uh, needed. So you see here, the, this code is also based on the contract API. And we have here the invoke uh, function, we have a delete function, and we have a query function. So the main function is uh, based on every uh, Go program, but uh, for, from, from the functionality side, we have these three functions here, and we have one init function. So for the in initialization process that we can say, okay, we have uh, an account A and account B with this, uh, certain amount, amount of money. So, and here you can see, yeah, this is, this is the chain code. And this is now the coding abstraction from the smart contract. When we follow the picture from the first slide, we have seen uh, a written contract where we can, you can imagine a written contract between the managers of organization A and organization uh, two. And then uh, we have a, a program written in the language Go. And uh, this is the so-called chain code then. And uh, yeah, so, and this, this here, you can see the dependencies. Yeah, so minimal Go, uh, go 1.13 um, uh, uh, is needed. And uh, yeah, so you can see the dependencies on you need see here furthermore uh, dependent. So, and um, yeah, that's this chain code. And the first thing what we have to do is now we have to uh, load this vendors. So it's already done, but I do it uh, that you can see it works. So, and when you see here, the vendor, you see here, uh, all dependency are now installed. So, and then, we can switch back to our root directory. And uh, for the uh, chain code package process, so it's important to have the framework config path environment variable set, but we have all set it already in the, in the org1 file. And the package process is very simple. That's this command. And this command is divided into, so here see, we have the peer command. So uh, that's the reason why we, why we have to make sure that the environment variable to the pin directory is set correctly. 
Um, and this is uh, one task we have done in the last session. So we can call the peer command as a binary directly from every position now uh, from the operating system because this, this command is part of the path, of the system path. So, and then uh, this command will be found like any other command on the system, uh, ls, copycat, and so on. And then we have here the command lifecycle and chain code package. And then we have to give them a name. So we can give, in my case, this app store tar gz. So you have a tar archive and, and, and a zip tar archive. So, yeah. And that's maybe a, a third party software which they will use to package uh, his the package with chain code. And then we have to say, okay, where, did you, where is the directory of the uh, chain code? And then which language used? So we use the Go. We use it. So in this label, this now starts to be important. So we will see that this label is like an identificator um, that we can see, okay, this is label, uh, this is store underscore one. And uh, so can uh, identify with this. And to this label, there will be later a hash value, which stands for the, for the, for the package chain code. And, uh, but this we will see a little bit later. So, okay. So when we try this, then we will have here a file Character. So we can look into this tar file um, with the tfx command um, app store. Um, oh, not tfx, tfz. So, and you see two files in. Yeah. You see this meta JSON file a JSON file with meta information, and you see the code target set file. So in this code target set, there is a error uh, inside. What I uh, see here um, the, from the chain code director. So we can extract with this code here, so we can make a short look into the meta. And when we see uh, cut meta, um, let me try a check who on this. Ah, yeah. So, and you, so you can cut this file. Then you will have this result. But we have installed as a helper tool uh, in the last session, check who. And uh, when we pipe this, then we can have here uh, uh, a nicer output for the command line. So, and what is inside of this? So we see the type. We say, okay, that's a Golang. So that's important for the install process uh, later because we install this target set package. So, and then this is the label. So maybe that's, you can say it's also a version. So this is the version app store underscore one. This is my version, which I have seen here. And then here's the path uh, from the chain code. So, so it's not really complicated here. So, okay, we can delete this um, and we can delete this file as well. Okay, so, and then the next step is to install the chain code on each organization. And uh, these are the steps to, pr to prepare the organization one environment file. Uh, we have, we did this already. And then we need the chain code install command. So. And with this command, uh, peer lifecycle chain code install and the name of the uh, tar heap. So, and when you send this now to a second organization, so in our scenario, it's very simple because we have one physical, um, one virtual machine. And then this virtual machine, we have uh, two Docker containers, one for organization one and one for organization two. But in a real case scenario, maybe we have uh, we have the network in different 
uh, data centers uh, because, uh, and we have connected this over the IP addresses or, or over the um, over Docker Swarm overlay network, for example. And uh, so, but we have it uh, on different machines maybe so and different person should do this the organis the administrator from organization one should do this and a different person from the organization two uh, or, or from another organization organization uh, should do this so and we can send them uh, this uh, file and then he can inspect this check it and then install it and here you see the first time an output from the Docker chain code container. And that's also good uh, when you so uh, try to modify your chain code and you don't use um, testing or, or you don't uh, uh, think, okay, that's a minor changes. We don't need testing. And um, uh, I don't have a test network or something like this. And when the process breaks, from a an, an syntax error or something like this, then you will see this here. Yeah. So the syntax errors will be printed here to this to this terminal. But in my in my case, we reached the done point here, and you can see okay, successfully installed chain code. This this is a good information. But we will have another information, which is now useful for us. So. Uh, look here, so successfully installed chain code with package ID. So this is the app store package ID, and this is the hash of the chain code. And we need this. We need this uh, on a later step. So and this is another environment where we able, we have to be, uh, we have to see, uh, we have to take, Notice, so this is then here, when we um, install, so when we improve, so we have to give the package ID, yeah? And we have to uh, create an environment variable, uh, CC package ID yeah? with this string, with the, with the label here, and with the hash value here. And, uh, that's the reason why this is important. So when we install this, so. And so we can copy this uh, and you see, okay, uh, 409 and uh, 39 um, in, the, in the first position. So, okay, that's the same hash. But um, that this hash is not, uh, something related to the time or uh, it's related only on the chain code. So when you have the same chain code, then you can install, you can install this chain code and you will have always the same hash value here. So that's what hashes are for. So we have an input and this input uh, is the chain code. And when the chain code is not modified, when the chain code is uh, untouched, then the hash value will always be the same. And uh, that's also important to know. So. So that's not a, a random hash. So this hash stands for exactly the, this chain code. Okay, so we have installed this. So we can copy and paste this, or we can use another command to see uh, which package ID is installed and we can copy this a little bit later also. So, yeah. But you have the possibility to copy this here, or you can use a command, which I will show you a little bit later. So, okay. Organization one is done. Now we have to switch to organization two. We do this in uh, to execute the organization two environment variables. Yeah. I will show you the print and command uh, and with a grab of the core. So that you will see that we have changed here. So organization two, you have another port number um, and we have also here the change organization two uh, admin organization two, so, uh, and well, remember uh, with this command, you can see uh, which uh, variables you have set. Yeah, and then we can do the same again. We install this on the second organization. 
and you see the same process like before the chain code will be uh, created the chain code container yeah it will be built it here and uh, if everything works we will receive the same result as for organization one So we have reached also the done. And then we see also here the message. And you will see, okay, that's the same hash value as we have seen for organization one. So, I mean, you can also say, okay, when you send your, um, you can install your chain code on your, on your on, on your beer and and then you can send the chain code to the organization uh too and give them your the hash value and then they can compare the hash value if this is the unchanged uh, uh chain code so i think that's also an, a built-in security mechanism um where you can demonstrate that this chain code is the same uh as we have uh, uh, as we have uh, sent here with this, with this easy check here. Okay, so, and that's it. So now we have installed this chain code on both uh, organization. And if this command query installed, uh, can we check it? So we can check what is installed on this uh, chain code, on, on, this, on this channel. And you see here the same, so. Yeah? And that's what I have meant. You can uh, copy and paste this label and the uh, hash value from the output on this side or uh, when you don't have this output you can create it again with this uh, query installed uh, command and then you have this again here okay so this is one and now we have to we have to do the approve process so and now we can say okay we switch back to organization one so we check it again. Was okay. It's also installed this uh, App Store chain code, and then we have to set this uh, for the improve process. We have to uh, do this command here. So the approve from my org, beer lifecycle chain code approve from my org, and uh, this needs some uh, commands here, some uh, options here. Most options are always the same. So the, the O option stands for the orderer. Uh, then here, this is for the orderer TLS. Then channel ID is for channel ID. So the name is for the name of your app store. Oops. Yeah, be careful with this. And then we have a version. So this is version one. And then we have package ID, and then we have here a secrets number. Then we have the TLS, and then the certified authority file from the uh, TLS, uh, TLS CA from the example.com uh, organization here. So, and the important points here are these three uh, options. And the package ID is clear. So the package ID, this is the package ID. So this one, the 39, 39. And when we have here, 409, 409, that's the same. So um, we don't have to control these numbers here. So because if anything is changed in this uh, chain code, then the hash will be completely different. So when you make a comma, then you will have a completely different hash value. So that's the, the aim of, the, uh, of, of every hash, hash function. And then you will have here in front, not three and nine or in the back uh, four, zero, nine. So you will have a completely different and you don't, you see it with, with, with open eyes, that's another uh, chain, that's another hash. So there is something wrong with this. So, Okay, so then we export this uh, environment variable. 
So, and then here I have always two so parts, so, so parts, one command to explain and one command to copy. So this is the, 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 the ready command where, which you can copy. And here is that we can uh, discuss about this. So and this is clear. So now we have environment variable with the dollar here. And uh, yeah, and then we have a sequence number and we have a version. So uh, this is version one and this is the sequence number. So the version one is something like, um, like the label you can say, uh, but uh, you can give them a version number uh, like you want. So in, in the session, in the upgrade I have here. So what I've done in the upgrade, in the upgrade process I have done. So you see version uh, 1.1. So that's what I have said. Okay, you can say, we, we say, we have a version number with three numbers, 1.1, 1.11 or 1.10. And then we can say, okay, when we have a minor fix, yeah, a bug fix, or we have a new feature, or we have a, change, a code changing break uh, version, then we can here control this. But this depends only to you. So you can do whatever you want here on this. Uh, position and uh, so that's the version so and the sequence is a single number so and this is an increment number so you have to increase this number on every chain code uh, commit sequence uh, which you are going to do here. so and this is what sequence one two three four and so on so and I think that's the important parts here on this. So, okay, but we are not ready now. So, I don't. So, what we have done, we have the package ID. So, we have the query installed. We have set the package ID. Ah, now we have to improve the chain code. So, that's the step we are going to do now. We have to improve the packaging. So, uh, let me first check. Who am I? So I'm the organization one. Okay, so now as organization one, we, um, but the command is basically the same for both organizations. So, and with this command, we are going to approve the chain code for organization one. And you see, okay, committed with status valid at localhost. So this looks good. And uh, we can check now the readiness of this chain code. So, and this is the command check commit readiness of this chain code. And with this command, we can check how many of our, uh, of our um, organization has uh, approved this chain code. And you see the commands here, it's basically the same. Yeah? We have the channel, we have the version, and we have the sequence number. So these both options must match this options here, yeah? version number and sequence number. And this is for the TLS again, and the name of the chain code and the channel. And when we do this, you will receive this output, approvals. And you see organization one is true and the organization two is false. And when we now try to install, to commit the train code, then the process uh, will fail because we don't have the majority of the, of the members. And uh, so also organization two has to improve the train code. And uh, now we switch to organization two. And we can do the same. So the command is the same. There is no difference in the command. 
And the check readiness. So we need the, the approve command. This one. So, and then we check the readiness again. And you see here, we have true and we have true. And now we are ready. So we have installed the chain code on both organizations. We have approved the chain code on both organizations. And before we have approved, we have checked the uh, chain code and have tested it and have, have looked into it if everything is right uh, uh, according to the smart contract. And then the final step yeah, is the committing of the chain code definition to the channel. And this command is basically uh, the same from the options you see here, it's the same. But here, when we commit this, we have to take care that uh, we have here all peers involved. You know? So, and we commit the version one and the sequence one here. So, and then we copy this. So, and now you can see we have here two new transaction IDs. And that, that means that when we look at Docker PS, we have here two running chain code containers. And that's what I have said before. So the chain code containers now are running. So, and we see here the app study label and here you see the hash of this. So when you know the hash of your chain code, then you can be sure, okay, that's the right one I have gave you to install it. So this is a transparent uh, process here. And both organizations here uh, have a running chain code container. So, okay, and then one command left. So we can check up the, uh, we can check if the query is committed. And uh, yeah, for this, we need the channel one, the channel ID and the name and uh, the, the, the CA file. So there's also a command we can look into. And you see here, version one, sequence one, endorsement, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and here approvals yeah, from org one and org two. So these are the output where you can see. So that means that when you come later to the system, then you can check which organizations has approved the strain code. And when we have uh, two or three organizations more, and then we will see how they have voted to this. So basically it's a voting process. So you can vote for this chain code in the case that you uh, approve it. So, and then we are ready to use this. So, and then our methods here, um, we have the init function, the invoke function, query and delete, we can skip. So, the init function is, uh, yeah, as we have seen in the last uh, session, so there is, no, there, is, there is nothing new on this. So the only important uh, new part is this highlighted uh, field here. So um, you can see here with the C uh, option here, um, I have a string, a JSON string, as I have explained in the last session. And then we have here a function and we call a function directly from the chain code here. So, and I have done this here in the same way for the query. So we have a function and we have a query and look here. So we have the invoke and we have the query here. So yeah, these are our target points here. And then we have the possibility to deliver arguments. And these arguments are always 
delivered uh, in a, a string array. So we have for the query only the count one and the count two. And here for the init function, function init. So that's our basic uh, first first step that we say the account number one uh, receive 1000 uh, units and the account number two receive 10 units. So that we have a, an initial value to start. And you see, oh, it's a little bit too fast. And you have seen uh, uh, that the printed, but we will see it a little bit later. And uh, now we can query it. So, yeah. so we can query. And you see here, something like this. And then, parameter. So, and uh, the invoke is the same. So, and uh, the invoke function, and then we are going to uh, say, okay, we will send uh, 100 units from A to B. That's what our, uh, that's what our business contract um, is for. You see here, ah. so you can scroll with the panel, but I have forgotten the finger keys for the scrolling here. So. The only disadvantage I think with the Max terminal is uh, that you cannot scroll like in a normal uh, uh, terminal, but you can do it with a special combination, but I have forgotten, I'm sorry, I've forgotten this combination now, so I then cannot scroll back here. Um, but anyway, so, okay, and then we have another transaction, so, and you see, okay, we have here, another number so and here yeah, this number 110 so okay and so on and so on so um the delete asset we can skip so and then the system is running so and we use it a lot and then the business guys came in and say okay we need now a modification so we need uh, in our system uh, a fee and now they have decided that we want 2% uh, of every transaction for us. And uh, this is the new smart contract. And now uh, this comes to you, to the chain code developer, to the chain code administrator. And uh, now you're in a position to modify this. Now you have to do uh, this process again, and you have to change this existing system with, uh, with the new functionality of the chain code. And um, this is basically the same work as we have seen uh, before. And when we look here in, this, in, in the chain code, uh, then the only thing I have done here is, uh, so this is only for simplicity. So I have, I have left this to integer values, so all in, because all values here are integers, so I don't want to convert this all to a float 64 and uh, a float 46 uh, uh, data type. And I have introduced here the, the fee of 2%, and uh, I have a, a new fee holder account created. Uh, it's called bank. And when we do an invoke, uh, then we do a simple uh, map of this. So uh, we uh, grab the old, we grab the money from the, uh, the, 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 the amount from this uh, free, from this fee holder. And then we calculate here the fee. So we uh, have, the, that's our amount of fee. We have uh, calculated 2% here and then uh, we uh, minus this 2% yeah, for, the, for, the, for the P, so because he has to pay the fee. <laughs> and uh, yeah, here the print commands. So in this print commands, you can see here in the, in the terminal, in the, in the output from the terminal. And uh, yeah, and then we do here the upgrade command and update the, the boot state with the boot state 
command here with the new free value. So, but it's not a really good example how we can do this, but this here is only for demonstration and not for chain code best practice development. So uh, I need something, I needed something that we can modify and makes a little bit sense that we can have a, a good uh, example. So, but you can look into that and can try to improve this and try to improve this example to a float number uh, so that you can have uh, really uh, correct numbers uh, for, the, for the fee. So, and that's it. So, so okay, the chain code developer has said, okay, we are ready with this. And then the process starts again. So we go in the chain code container and chain code uh, folder from the app store to, to directory. And we do basically the same. So we have to uh, install the dependencies here again. So nothing changed, everything is the same. And then we need the config path for this. We have set the config path and now we can package the chain code again. And for the package the chain code, okay, we say we gave them another name, this is the appsta2 target and uh, the path is to the appsta2. It's also Golang, the language and we gave them a new la label. So the new label is then 1.1. Uh, so and then we should have this package again. And when we look into this, we see the same. So we have these two files inside. And that's basically the same. And then the process is really like the same. So we are looking, we are organization one, and then we install this package in the organization one. And here again, you see the output from this process. So, okay, it's a little bit too hard. So, okay, this is ready now. And uh, we check now, it's also good to, to look into this. So, when you saw, when you see query, when we call the query install command, so you see here, you have two of them. So you have the app store one with the first hash and you have the app store 1.1 with the second hash here. So these packages are installed now. And we have to uh, set the, uh, the, the, the new chain code package ready environment variable here. So I have, you can name it also chain code package ready, but uh, I think it's better when you say here, it's new. So we can have a little bit more control about this. So and let us check the hash value. This is a um, eight um, seven F. So I think the chain numbers um, are correct. Chain numbers are correct. So this is this. And then we can improve this for organization one as well. So we say we trust us. And then we check the awareness. And you see the version one with the sequence two. So that's important here. Uh, we don't we must carefully to not to be not too fast here. So you see here's the sequence one because it's the second uh, iteration for this chain code and we have a version 1.1. So, yeah, and that's important yeah, to see 
the difference between the version number and the sequence number. And when we query this chain code for the readiness, then we have to use this uh, again. Okay, and then we have to switch to organization two. Organization two has also to install this. Okay, they checked it before and they say, okay, that's everything is fine. And when they come to this point, they, they will install the new chain code. And when everything uh, is fine, Yeah, then we can we check also on the second organization, the situation with this, and we can see, okay, we have also here these two packages in installed, and we have the A8, F7, so that's correct. And then we can also, um, approve this and with the readiness command we see the version one with the sequence two is approved by these two organizations here and then the final step is to upgrade the string code now And from now, we should have the new chain code in a new chain code container. And here we are. So we have the App Store 1.1 with the uh, A8 hash on organization two and organization one, and we have the same. So now we have seen the upgrade process and we are ready to test the chain code. So, and when we, it's, when we try to invoke, when we send 500 uh, units from account one to account B, Then we have here success. And then when we query the bank, <laughs> we have a fee of 10% of 10 units. Huh? So 400. And 600. So do it again. Then we create a bank. So you see you have it. So I think we are at the end. So let's sum up this. So what we have seen here is that we have a new process to install a chain code on in the fabric network and uh, the main thing of this is that we have more control on the uh, installation yeah and and on the governance so that's why they call it governance life cycle so when we say in our life cycle endorsement policy uh, from the whole network that the majority or a particular number of organizations must agree to changes to chain codes, then we can initialize a process where the single organization can uh, vote for this in a way that they have to improve it. And when this number is improved, uh, when the majority is reached or the, 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 the number is reached, what we have uh, 
which organization must approve, then the new chain code uh, can be installed and only then can be installed. And uh, so that's, that's, I think it's a good step in, in more control what is installed on the chain code. So the interesting part is here, the, some side notes I gave you. So what happened if we find organization two um, has um, a Node.js application and uh, queries the data uh, for something <coughs> and uh, or they have uh, <coughs> different input. <coughs> they need a different input validation and we have to make uh, small or minor changes to the chain code. So how this work? Yeah, so where we can do this improvement. So, and the other scenario would be, so what is when, when a small bug exists? So, and uh, the risk is when we say, okay, we have uh, 10 organizations and maybe in one, in one certain situation, we have a bug in the chain code. So maybe the, the, something works and we can fix it very easily. And the uh, system administrators on holidays are, um, not in the office and so on. So how we can handle this situation in the real world scenario. And I think this is the reason why they have put in this, this, uh, this, this hints and this, uh, this, this text as to the documentation. So, but it, this is one, what we have to discover, what we have to uh, try out and uh, to see how the system, um, works how the system behaves when this real life scenario will happen so but this is not so uh, i think uh, um, as, uh, there, there can be an error there can be a bug in certain situations so that's not unusual in software development that some errors um, occur only in tested systems so um, tested systems uh, even less uh, but uh, errors everything that ha could happen will happen in the software uh, area and um, and how you can handle this. So, and that's an important question, how we can uh, act as an administrator or as an operator uh, and we how we can handle this situation. So, and that's also, that, that is something we have to test. We have to build a scenario like this and then we have to see how we can do this for the, for the real world in the real world scenario. Okay, so um, I think I'm at the end. I hope I have seen you a uh, cool example uh, from the chain code. And um, yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free and uh, post it here. Um, if I can answer it now, then I will do it. And if not, um, I will uh, post it uh, on the Slack channel then later. So, and uh, yeah, do you have any questions? How will and does chain code upgrade pro procedure apply also when upgrading chain code package dependencies? Hmm. This is a good question. I haven't tried this, but when we uh, say that the hash value is changed from the package, then I think we have to upgrade. Yes. Also, I cannot say it uh, per hundred percent, but I think when you when some dependencies change from uh, maybe an external Go package, uh, then uh, the of course, because Go is a binary file. So what you will have is a, is a completely new binary file and uh, then you have a different chain code. So it doesn't matter if you change uh, uh, something like, uh, it doesn't matter if you change this output here yeah, to something like this, then you have a completely different chain code. And uh, because the Go code will be um, compiled in the binary code. 
So this is not executable. So in Go, we have the source code here, and then we have an executable binary file, and that, that will be completely different. Uh, so I don't know, I think that the, that the system who executes the, the ready chain code cannot uh, different between these uh, differences and say, okay, for this I, can, I don't have to do an upgrade procedure. So I think we have to upgrade also uh, the chain code when some dependencies uh, change because um, a completely new Go program is built. And that's the reason. But we have to try it. So, um, but I think that would be um, a logic um, explanation for this. Uh, yeah. This is Daniel. This is Daniel. Uh, thanks for the great presentation. Uh, I would have a question. Uh, how much do you know this is different if, if you use like external chain code and external chain code containers? Yeah, that's also a new feature. Um, I haven't tried it yet now, but uh, we will discover it in the series. So in, in one series later or in two series, uh, to meet up so we can look in this external chain code because this is also a new feature. So um, I don't want to say at this moment something to that. So I would like to discover it. And uh, then this is a feature which we can uh, investigate or discover in a single meetup, I think. Okay, how you cool, can awesome. Thanks, how, you can, how you can manage this, yes. So please show the query history. Ha, that's a really good question, <laughs> query history. Um, what do you mean with query history? You mean, um, maybe you mean uh, the uh, states from the past? Or you mean all transactions to an asset? Yes. So, okay, um, that's also a question which we cannot cover here in this. So, um, what I know is that uh, um, in the low level, in the low level SHIM um, API, so in version 1.4, for example, you can't query the history, the, the transactions from the chain code side. That is something I have done with the, with the SDK. So you can do it with the SDK. And uh, I'm not sure if we can do this uh, from the, um, with the new contract API, but make this, make this sense. So because when we query the transactions, we don't have to do anything with the ordering system. So we have we query only our own PR. So we query the, the, uh, the ledger, the channel and the ledger uh, directly from our PR and not from the ordering system. So we are not changing the read write set. So that's not a, um, a functionality which is implemented in the chain code. And I think maybe it's also, so, I think from, from my understanding, it must be the same in the Fabric uh, 2 version. So uh, and when you look at the Node.js SDK, you will find the examples how you can query all transaction to an asset. So the uh, invoke commands here, when, when we see here the init and then the, in the invoke command, the put state here, these commands only goes to the world state. And the world state is implemented in, in this case, in a, in a, in a, um, in a, in a, in a level DB database as a chain code, uh, as a state database, or in a couch DB as a state database. So um, you have, you only interact with the world state of an asset. So, and uh, as I have said in the last session, where we have a, uh, um, the system is simple. So here the put, this is the key, and this is the value. So that's the only thing that the chain, that the blockchain do. So we store a key with a corresponding value. 
and the value is in fabric a byte string. So, and here is single and integer, but here can also a JSON object. And uh, this interact, this API interacts with the world state. And uh, this, the, the world state is only the last state of an, um, of an asset. And the transactions are stored also on the ledger. And that's also a good question because the question here would be very cool, how we can see a valid transaction and an unvalid transaction. Because when we do an invalid transaction, for any reason, the transaction is also stored into the ledger. But this transaction don't change, change the world state. And when, and when it comes to, to know, okay, how many people want to try to manipulate, manipulate our system, then it would be interesting to see how many invalid transactions we have in the system. And uh, that would be an interesting question, research question, how we can uh, make a list from all transactions from an asset uh, which are valid and from the transactions which are invalid. And that's an important part. So also when the transaction is not valid, it will be stored on the ledger, but it doesn't change the world state. And yeah, but that's another story how you can do this. But, but I think to answer your question, finally, uh, please look at the Node.js SDK or another SDK. And uh, there you will find uh, also in the favorite samples, you will find uh, in the FAPCA or in, in other examples, you will find um, um, some uh, Node.js code where you can query the history uh, that means all transactions to an asset. And then I think to have, you have to extract uh, from this transaction the status and then you can see if this is a valid or invalid uh, transaction. So, um, I mean, um, I'm not sure how we can simulate an invalid transaction. So, that's also a little bit and um, a little bit difficult to simulate maybe such a situation so but anyway so that's an uh, a good research question how we can uh, list to these types of transactions of an uh, existing uh, or even uh, deleted asset and yes the session is recorded and um, after this session i will send this to the uh, to david Boswell. He is our connecting people to the Hyperledger organization, and uh, he will publish this uh, meetup uh, to the official Hyperledger uh, channel. So that will be in the next days. And then you can uh, watch this uh, uh, on the YouTube channel of, from Hyperledger. Okay, so any questions left? If not, uh, I have to say thank you for uh, your time. Um, and you see it takes a little bit more than uh, one hour and one and a half hour, but I think we have uh, this event only weekly. So um, yeah, so I hope uh, you enjoyed the session and uh, I hope we will see, we will hear us next time and uh, in the agenda, uh, in the presentation, there is an agenda, and uh, and there I will publish then the topic for the next uh, uh, for the next session. So you will be informed uh, enough to, uh, that uh, you see what we have planned for the next time. Okay, so then I wish you all a good time, a good time, and take care and stay safe in this time. And I hope we will see uh, or hear us again uh, in two weeks. Bye-bye.